Hello, I'm Johan Fierman from War from Research South America. I'm going to talk about a, a War from Language platform for blockchain smart contracts and cross-chain. What I'm going to show you right now is uh, what we have been developed for uh, the last month, or this year actually. It is a platform for uh, not only blockchains, but also for uh, developing s uh, smart contracts, and also it will be useful for connecting blockchains as well. So, everyone knows what a blockchain is? What I've, what I've found is that, yes, most of the time people uh, talk about blockchains, but they don't really know what blockchains uh, <laughs> are used for or um, how they work. How do we see it is, is like it's the uh, digital evolution of the accounting books and registers. That's, I think, probably the most accurate term. So it will probably be very important in the future, uh, but not for everything like uh, the hype uh, that it has today. But let's see. So the outline for this presentation is we're going to show an architecture for transactions and smart contracts. Um, how to do transaction and smart contracts in three easy steps. That is creating, signing, and submitting a transaction as easy as that. Uh, Cross-chaining, what does that mean? Uh, token analysis as well. And finally, uh, what we're trying to do right now is integrating all this with Wolf of Alpha. Okay, so this is too big. Better? Yeah. So, okay. This is a simplified version of our architecture right now. So, how does it work? Everyone that has access to a world from kernel uh, will be able to access all the blockchain functions and, use, and, and build transactions and smart contracts. So, once you have a world from kernel or in your computer or in the cloud or wherever, uh, you use your functions that go through this API server and they are then uh, sent to our nodes. We'll have nodes for right now for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we have our own Wolfram experimental blockchain, which is based on multi-chain. And then the, whenever there's a smart contract, this is harvested by, harvested by our computer nodes, and these smart contracts are stored in a certain storage, uh, which can be IPFS, which is the, for those of you who haven't heard of this, is the interplanetary file system, very important name. Um, in the future, we'll have S3 as well, of course, the cloud, and Dropbox, as well as other. We will come, uh, we'll revisit this after a, a few slides. So, transaction. Let's create a transaction. How do you create a transaction? Let's, let's make sure we're on the test net so that we don't spend real money. Okay, we need an address and a private key to sign that. So, these are requirements. So, <clears throat> let's get information about a certain address using one of the new functions, which is blockchain address data. Uh, what do we need this for? We need to see, okay, if we have enough balance to do something. And we also need this transaction account over here because that is something required. It is one of the double checks that uh, the blockchain uses for avoiding double spending. Okay. Then let's check on the, using blockchain data, we can check on the gas prices. The gas is uh, something that we, uh, it's a fee that we pay to the miners so that the contract gets mined and included in the blockchain. So we can see if that the last, um, in the last block, the highest gas price was 15. Let's use that so that we can make sure that it is indeed um, mined. And we have everything we need right now. So as easy as that. So let's build our blockchain transaction using those, uh, using our, uh, the transaction count, the address, the gas price, and the amount we want to, to send over to another, to this destination address, which is you know, a test address as well. And it's a small number, it's a quadrillion way, <laughs> which is nearly nothing because one ether right now is 10 to the 18, way, so it's a very, very small number, actually. So we build this object that has everything we need for the transaction. 
Once we have this object, we want to sign it. We use our private key for that. So the signed state here has changed to true. And then we submit it to our node, OK? As easy as that. We build a transaction, we sign it, and we send it to our node. That's as easy as that. So um, we want to check uh, if the, OK, if the, if the uh, transaction we send has been mined. If we had done this like very fast, we probably get this message here, which is pending to mine. It takes about 10 seconds more or less to get mined right now in the Ethereum blockchain. So it has already been mined. Okay, and then we can check if indeed there has been any transfer. This, is, this was our original account with the original uh, balance that we had. And let's see what we have right now. So yeah, indeed we have spent a bit less than a dollar transferred to that, and the transaction count has, uh, has, 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 has increased. So we in fact, has, we have just created a very simple transaction for uh, transferring Ether or Way in this case from one account to another in Ethereum. This, uh, this, this very simple process is the same for Bitcoin right now. We have it, we have it for both of the blockchains. So, um, what about smart contracts? Smart contracts are transactions with conditions. That's it. So it's a transaction with if-then conditions. That's what we call it programs because that's what they are. So we have to add another step to this, which is creating the smart contract itself. That has a little more complication. OK, so let's try to, um, OK, let's do a very simple uh, script, a very simple contract that checks for the weather of a beautiful city, which is where we live. Um, and what we'll do is we'll, we're going to store this Wolfram uh, script into an external storage. We'll see, we'll see uh, why uh, later on. OK, so we're going to store it in the in the IPFS, and now we're going to create our smart contract object here. Okay, so um, this seems easy, and this is easy, but it is not. What this function is doing right here is uh, the language used in Ethereum for doing smart contracts is Solidity, as probably uh, you know. So what we're doing is we're giving all the template in Solidity, and in one of the variables, we're adding uh, the address of where the smart contract is going to be stored in external storage. So it is, it is included as a payload inside a Solidity contract. We're planning to do that. You know, there are languages that are used for, for smart contracts as well, so we're going to add all the templates for them as well. So this is an actual contract uh, made in Solidity, including a word from script inside it that can be run. So again, we need a transaction count. And once again, the same, the same case as before. Once we have built our smart contract, we do the same steps as before. We build the transaction, we sign it, and we submit it. So again, three easy steps. The only difference right now is that we have build a smart contract and included that smart contract in Southern transaction. In the other case, we didn't need that, but that's the same thing. It's as easy as that. So there's a ton of things going behind scenes, but, it, but for, for, for the user, it's as easy as that. So um, let's check if, if the transaction has been mined. It has already been mined. And what we can do now is try to check if the smart contract has been executed. If I do this right now, I probably get a false. And I explain why. And we'll get back to here. OK. So let me get back to the architecture first. So what is happening here is that, um, OK, we're sending the, in the first case for just a transaction, what we do is send a transaction via our API server and into the nodes. And there it is mined, and then it's distributed to the nodes throughout the world. In the case of a smart contract, as in this case, it's a bit different. What happens is that 
we store the smart contract, the Wolfram script first in one of these storage providers here. Then we send the transaction in the same way as before. But once it gets mined and into the nodes, what happens is the Wolfram computes nodes will harvest every block to check for transactions that are including a Wolfram script to be executed. So once that it finds, okay, we have here the address of our Wolfram script, it searches for it in one of the service storage providers and execute it, executes it, and then updates the state variable of the contract in the node, and it stores the, res it stores the result again in the certain storage so that it can be retrieved. So that's probably now it makes more sense, the architecture. So let's see. That takes a couple of minutes, so probably already that has happened. It has been harvested and we can use blockchain contract value now for that. Let's see. True, okay. So what this means is that the status of the, the contract has been updated to executed. So it has been. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what, let's download the result from the external storage. Let's get the address where it has been stored first. This is the address where it has been stored. We can get the object here and we can get the result. And this is the result. So right now it's 18 degrees Celsius, which is a very nice weather. And that is how our platform for smart contracts uh, works. What about cross-chaining? I'm not sure if you've heard about cross-chaining. The problem right now with blockchains is that there was supposed to be one blockchain for everything and that hasn't happened, of course. So we're having more and more blockchains and more and more specific kind of blockchains for different things. I know the problem is how do we communicate between these blockchains? So uh, right now, the approach is mostly for trying to exchange cryptocurrency, which is like the money exchange. We're going a bit uh, uh, further than that. Uh, two approaches exist right now. Uh, one is to create a blockchain of blockchains these two approaches are not the ones we're doing. This is what exists right now. So one is creating like a big blockchain and you have sub blockchains that connect to this higher blockchain. Um, uh, okay, the other is uh, inclu okay, uh, including a piece of code in a, in a certain blockchain to make it compatible with others. What we're proposing is with the Wolfram platform or a blockchain platform is something different. It's just include the blockchains in our ecosystem in a symbolic way and then they can easily interact with each other. So let me give you an example. For, for example, from what you have seen, I can easily do a, a word from script, okay, that gets uh, uh, executed, in, uh, that gets stored inside Ethereum. It gets executed by our, by our um, platform and then we can, with the same script, say, okay, now update this script, this script uh, as true in the uh, in Ethereum blockchain, but pay in Bitcoin, but go to another blockchain. So with our code, we can easily go from one blockchain to the other without anything, including any code, extra code, or doing a blockchain. It's a, it's a, the thing is in, in, including all the blockchains in our system so that they can interact with easy code. That's our approach for cross-chain. So what else do we have? We have... Um, we have tokens. Uh, now we need to make, to make sure we are in Ethereum as well, in the mainnet. What can we do with tokens? We can maybe get information from one of them, like the CryptoKitties, which I think probably everyone knows. Um, we could retrieve the top holders of that, of that uh, token. We can get the latest transfers. Say let's let's get the latest ten transfers of it. Uh, we can get all the tokens of a specific standards. There are two main standards right now, which are ERC twenty and ERC seven twenty one. There are many others, but these are the main ones, and we can get all of them if we want to. Um, we can also. Uh, get all the transfers done between a certain number of blocks, that is between, in these thousand blocks, how many transfers have included CryptoKitties inside them. 
or check for a transfers uh, for a transfers being made in a certain time interval. That is, in this case, for this case, in August 10 at 10 p.m. How many transfers involving CryptoKitties have we had? And finally, we can get, for example, for a holder, for a holder address, let's say I want to get all the information about all the tokens that a certain holder has in a certain standard, something like this. And many, many other things, of course. It, this is only some examples of what we can get. And of course, a, a ton of analysis can be done from, from these cases. So finally, um, what we always do is we integrate all our products as well. So of course, we want to work from Alpha to, uh, to, to work with this as well. So what we have right now, which is experimental still, is we have something like, OK, we can get information from, uh, from Ethereum, from all the real functions, actually. We can let, check, for example, first, the first big Bitcoin block. This is not the Genesis block, which is the block zero. We can get Ethereum's last block. with all the transactions included and so on. This will be clickable, of course, and you can check on each of them. Uh, you can get Bitcoin's latest hash. Or when was Ethereum block 15 mined, for example? Or even something more complex, like you can put a transaction inside and you'll get information from it, hopefully. Yeah. Um, yes, this is experimental still, so this is why the syntax is so terrible still. It's not easy getting this to, to work. So yeah, you can get the, for a certain transaction all the information about it just by asking Wolfram Alpha. Um, other things we're, pl we're, we're including, uh, which didn't make it, so I'm just putting some screenshots here. Is for information about specific addresses, um, they're still anonymous, but if you know who they are, you can track everything that they're doing, or the transactions. And of course, finally, uh, CryptoKitties as well, or any kind of other token. You can just uh, ask for it in Wolfram Alpha and you get a ton of information about it. That is coming very soon. And I think that's it. I just want to take a minute to mention all the great team I've been working with. Um, I couldn't be so, um, so much proud that to be working with these people who have uh, dedicated a ton of time doing this. And I think that's it. Thank you very much.